that RoboCup Asia Pacific 2022, our team, study in the Gifted Education Program at Nanyang Primary School. I am Wang Bohan, and it is my first time participating in this challenge. I have been in the school robotics CCA for the past two years, and I have good knowledge with Scratch and Python. I am Denzel Ong. I have participated in the Singapore Open 2022, and I have a background in Arduino and Microbit. I study in no space. I am Ho Bing Han. I have been in robotics CCA for two years already. I have participated in the Singapore Open 200, uh, 2022, and I create games on gaming websites. Fro Zihan is not free today, so he cannot attend this meeting. Executive Summary of Challenge We ended up with a score of 1450 for our preliminary challenge. We struggled with coding our ideas and thus used up some time. However, our ability to take risks and perseverance allow us to create some innovative ideas that enable us to achieve a high score. Also, we never gave up with our code until the last minute. We finally learned the meaning of the proverb, success is not the absence of failure, but it's the persistence through failure. Nevertheless, we could have improved by taking up less time to generate ideas, hence giving us more time to code and improvise. The mission of the challenge is to navigate a robot to collect objects of different colors and deposit the objects in an orange zone. With the map, we developed several strategies to allow the robot to collect and deposit objects in the shortest possible amount of time. Line following, obstacle avoidance and the robot trap. For line following, when the robot has three objects or more in its inventory and it hits the green line on the map, it will turn, 200, it will turn to 270 degrees and move towards the deposit zone. Trap avoiding, we coded the robot to turn the opposite direction when it senses the color yellow, which is the color of the warning zone of the trap zone. Obstacle avoiding. We coded the bot to turn when the ultrasonic sensors had a value less than 13 or when it detected a danger zone. However, the robot will pass through the yellow zone if it has no objects so as to not waste time. Robot trap. The robot is trapped in the 00, zero coordinate for a period of time so that it can deposit the orange zone. We coded the robot so that it will turn downwards when it was too high up and turn left when it is too far right. How to follow the green line? When the robot detects the green line, it will turn towards the deposit area and follow the green line to, to the deposit zone. When any one of the robot's sensors touches the green line, the robot turns to 270 degrees and moves straight towards the deposit zone. This ensures that the robot can go to deposit its items efficiently, as we notice that the robot often passes by the green line. We also program the robot to turn and move forward according to the green line only if it has three or more objects, so that there was a possibility of depositing an RCB combo and earning the extra points that we need. So how to use square targeting? Square targeting is another method that we can we used. It is used to trap a robot in one ind individual part of the map and is a very useful technique to have in this challenge. In square targeting, the map is divided into nine squares with equal area. Each square can be re represented, represented by its XY coordinates. Since we observed that one of the deposit zones was in the bottom left of the map, we coded it so that when it reaches the coordinates of 0, 0 and has 
three to six objects, the robot will be trapped temporarily in the box. Hence, the robot will bounce off the boundaries and walls, eventually depositing the object objects in its inventory into the deposit zone. The game. This is our game video, video which has been sped up by two times. Please sit back and enjoy. Our final score was 1,450. Our average score is around 1,250 to 1,400. We combined the previous strategies to get this score, and we hope that it will allow us to succeed in this competition. The robot is now in the coordinates zero zero. If it has three objects when it and it is still in that in those coordinates, it will head to the deposit zone. Otherwise, it will turn towards the green line and hit the deposit at the other deposit zone as shown. The robot has collected four black objects. It is unlikely that it can get an RCB combo, but it collects a red. Now it might need to collect it just needs to collect a siren, but instead it just moves off. The robot has just collected a red, a cyan, and a black object. Let's see whether it allows us to get an RRCCBB combo. All we need to do is collect another cyan, and yes, the robot goes to collect the cyan, then deposits its objects, earning many bonus points. We're nearing the end of the game and the robot is still moving. Let's see it um let's see it go to the deposit zone and deposit its objects. But instead the time runs out. Now let's watch a video on how we can apply the robot in real life. Applying knowledge gained to the real world. Such robots are extremely useful in the real world, especially when exploring unknown terrains. For example, scientists have recently engineered a robot named Justin to help astronauts collect samples from the moon. Justin can use ultrasonic sensors 
to find out the safest, safest route to use. The ultrasonic sensors can also be used to detect any obstacles that stand in the robot's way. The astronauts can deploy these robots to search for different types of rocks by avoiding obstacles and collecting the rocks to deposit into a storage area. Astronauts can also break down the moon into several plots of land that will be searched and focused on some specific parts to avoid the terrain and climate, something similar to square targeting. Hence, the robot Justin can identify the specimens to bring back to the astronauts, avoid craters or boulders, and safely deposit the specimens into the storage area to be brought back to Earth. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.